Hello and welcome back to the Josh Dixon Show. How's everybody doing? It's uh, we got the same group back for his last time. Um, Dan, why don't you start us off? Who are you and what do you do? Hi, I'm Dan Hogan. I am a novelist and a college English professor. I also have kids and make dad jokes. I'm Trevor. I'm a software engineer by day and a video game enthusiast by night. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Michael. I like cracking wise and I have really good taste in everything. It's a little swing in there. Uh, and I'm Josh Dixon, uh, freelance filmmaker, business owner, and uh, video game movie enthusiast. Like talking about games, movies, and everything in between. Uh, today, our topic conversation is video game movie adaptations or shows or whatever. Adapting a video game into entertainment that you watch. Uh, I want to hear from everybody what your ideal, like money is no object, easy button. Uh, you can make any video game property into a piece of entertainment. Um, and on top of that, how would you do it in terms of would it be animated, live action, a certain kind of style? Well, I think it's fun to think about it before we even get into the uh, to the introductions to it. Um, time of recording, 2023, we've had The Last of Us, which has pretty Impressive much stuff. confirmed, pretty much confirmed it can be done. You can adapt kind of. a video game, and it cannot be awful. I the disagree with that a little broken. bit. I disagree a little bit, just because the Last of Us games are already basically movies. Fair enough, but I, I feel but, like but we they're have, not movies. We they're have the same as, proof of concept. Say that, Michael. But Nathan, you could say the exact same thing about Uncharted, and the movie was terrible. That it was the same amount of tea up for either one of them. Both of them were narrative driven stories. They, it wasn't really as an adaptation quite in the same way. They they like were coming up with an original story and stuff. So I'd say that I mean like point taken, it can be done, but uh maybe maybe I guess that had to be done first is you know, do a softball adaptation. Um Mark Wahlberg and Tom Helen Holland had to walk so that Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey could run. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I'll take my first crack at it. Sure. So one of the reasons that video games are hard to adapt is that it's not the same medium as film or television. Uh, and because sometimes the best video games are ones that are not something that you would rather watch as a movie or or as a television program or read as a book or so on and so forth. So that's one of the reasons why it's so hard. Now, I believed at one point that my choice was unadaptable. I believe now we could do it. I think it would work. And I'm thinking about Metroid. Mm. Which one? I wouldn't necessarily pick one, um, but I more as a franchise as a whole. Okay. okay. The so Metroid to me will always be Super Metroid from 1994. Um, it is one of my foundational games. It is. It might be my favorite game. Um, it's everything that I love about a video game. There are so many ways to play it. Uh, that you can do speed runs and you can get creative with it and that no two people's playthroughs of Metroid uh, will be the same. Uh, whereas, you know, open world is a big thing. Well, Metroid, ha it's not necessarily open world, but it's non-linear. You do not necessarily have to do everything in the same order. Um, there's limits there, uh, but it's... It's basically, hey, you're on a planet, figure it out. <laughs> now, that being said, it's gonna, it would be a real tough nut to crack from an adaptation standpoint. Um, and so one thing is that with graphics, you'd think, okay, well, how are you gonna make the technology work good? You know, how are you gonna make this not look like a video game? Well, and now we have Avatar. All right. And I don't even think you need I don't even think you necessarily even need something like Avatar that sophisticated, but to do the world correctly and the creatures correctly, you need something, you know, akin to that. Um the other thing I was thinking is, okay, well, S Samus or when 
I was growing up, I called her Samus because we didn't have the internet and we didn't have presentations <laughs> and they didn't have voice acting. So I have called her Samus and I probably will call her Samus until the day I die. Um, but she doesn't talk. And she doesn't take her helmet off. In fact, the the whole spoiler of the first game is that if you beat it on time, she takes her costume off and you're like, it was a girl? Um, <laughs> so then that was like the, the big thing. Um, but she doesn't talk much, or at least she, she doesn't in um, a large portion of the franchise. There are some, after GameCube, I, didn't, I haven't played through any of those. So there are some where she has more dialogue and whatnot. She doesn't talk a whole lot. And she has a bucket on her head the entire game. So I was thinking, well, how do you make a movie out of that? Well, Mando. Mando has a bucket on his head the entire uh, oh. the entire thing. He talks, but he doesn't talk a lot. Um, but then you have movies like Mad Max Fury Road, where Max does not talk a lot. And even the characters like Furiosa, who talk a little bit more, they still don't talk a lot. It's not a very dialogue-driven film. So... What I would try to do if I were adapting Metroid would be to lean into all that. And that's what would make this hard. So we would need something. We would need very strong special effects. But I would not try to make it something that it's not. Um, there's a couple options. You're going to have to have some kind of human interaction. You need Samus to talk to somebody or at least to interact with somebody. Some of the video games have given her a computer she talks to. It's never quite worked for me. Is it in the suit? Like a Jarvis kind of thing? Yeah, like an AI. Um, it's never quite worked for me. The One of the things that's interesting about Samus is that she has been, I guess, you know, so much of the, the story was written in instruction manuals that, you know, half the kids didn't read. Um, but she was raised by this, this alien... Uh, these creatures that, that are like the Chozos, the bird statues that give her her power suit. And so you know that there's this backstory there. What I would probably do is I would give her the A plot, which is she is on a mission. She is exploring some dead falling apart planet. She, we, I need that, that feeling of exploration, that feeling of isolation. Mm -hmm. That all has to be there. Um, is, it, is it important why? Like, is she stranded there? Like in Super Metroid, or like, is it a job? Is she's a bounty hunter, so it's usually a job of some sort. Yeah. So she's she's got a bounty to hunt, um, and so she would be on that. Um, that would be the A plot. What I would do is the B plot would be some of her backstory in snippets, so that most of her interaction with actual characters would be in the past and not in the present. And what I would try to do is write it in such a way that the, that the past scenes inform the present scenes. So she doesn't necessarily need to be having conversations with people, you know, on planet, wherever she is. But you would understand, based on what happened in her past, how to interpret what's happening in the future. Slumdog then, millionaire. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. Oh, um, no, you're... But like the, the other thing is that in the... Uh, in the Super Metroid, there's the joke is you have to get 100% items and save the animals. So saving the animals is you run into a few friendly creatures who will teach you how to do some stuff in game, like kind of like in per or like an in-game tutorial. Um, yeah. There's like an ostrich thing and these little like little goblin dog looking things um, that will teach you how to do some tricks and. At the end of the game, before you escape the planet when it blows up, you have to go rescue them as like a little Easter egg. And if you don't, it doesn't count and for your speed run. But I thought, wait, she can interact with something. If Tom Hanks can interact with volleyball, <laughs> she can interact with one of those animals. Or like in Super Metroid, she has the a, a baby Metroid that that's her mission. Is she's going to recover this baby Metroid that's the last Metroid. And I thought, again, now we know you can carry a narrative where it's just one guy talking to a puppet the entire movie. You know, Mando has proven that you can make that work. So that's the way I would try to do Metroid is I would, I would, there wouldn't be a lot of dialogue. Um, there, she would interact with something in the A plot. Um, 
you know, something that she's not shooting. Um, but I probably wouldn't have it be a speaking character. Um, I would have it be a creature of some sort um, that's kind of riding shotgun with her. Um, and the, at least doesn't speak in words, right? Exactly. doesn't speak in words. Gurgles, we communicate a little bit of, like yeah. a baby would. And yeah. And it would be largely, it would be largely action driven. Um, you know, think of like a, like a raid redemption or a, or a, a dread in the sense that it would, it's, it would be very kind of, or a Mad Max, very focused and action driven there. Um, and I think you can make it work. It would just be tough. Um, and then you need a good Samus. Um, and I think you need somebody who would be believably tough. You like really knew could, could kick your butt, um, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily unfeminine. Um, so you would want someone like a Charlize Theron. Um, she's, you know, she's uh, getting, well, she's like, I think in her forties or early fifties. So she could, she could still do it, but like maybe I mean, a, really a, start off a little younger than that. Pretty much. But if you wanted to get somebody younger who could be in more movies, you know, get somebody who's like a Charlize Theron type. Um, somebody who's, who can do the drama, the brooding, the action. Um, and that would work. And if there's ever potential to actually take her out of the suit at some point in the future, you know, cast for yes. that. Yes, and there would probably be some sections without her in the costume. But um, I would say 50% of the movie, no dialogue, her in the costume. Would you stick to much of a similar aesthetic to like H.R. Geiger, kind of like the original games were meant to? Like, as Not directly proportional, but like they were supposed to be very influenced. Because like, yeah, they're, I, kind, you know, they're kind of I, a spin off or like, they're kind of stealing stuff from Alien, right? Yeah, they're in the same wheelhouse. I would, uh, I think that Metroid Prime, um, the which is now twenty years old, um, I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's a beautiful game, and I would, I would shoot for a similar aesthetic to that. Isn't H. R. Geiger the guy that also the the Scorn game, the yeah. recent one? They they said so, yeah, uh, all weird, tangly guts. You know, it's it's the Alien aesthetic of the it's, weird. I can't really stuff. explain precisely what his aesthetic is in his actual art uh on this podcast without you cutting it out i can always uh, come to it there but there's a lot of sort a lot of, of robot dicks and vaginas and <laughs> a lot a lot of other. sexual imagery i uh would adapt legend of zelda again uh but they're done that but i would <laughs> i would do it uh a little differently than my 14 year old self um i used to think everything should be adapted to live action because i just thought it was cooler i i was too cool of a kid to want to i i don't know what stage in life i was probably a teenager in high school um where i just didn't want to watch cartoons i was kind of getting into more live action stuff um i do it animated but um and i feel like this is kind of the cheat answer everybody's giving now um but ever since spider-verse came out animation kind of took a pretty creatively sharp turn in terms of what was possible and even i think the new puss in boots did some stuff like that too i haven't seen it i heard the new puss in boots actually pretty cool in the way that they changed the uh, animation in certain parts a little bit i, they, I think they should have committed to it more yeah so they didn't quite go all all in on it there were some parts that were more interesting but um, I don't know. Um, oh, no. and, and but, then you have Arcane. It, Arcane well, yeah. is the is Arc the Arcane, is Arcane is the animation that I now think is the pinnacle of animation that I like specifically. Like I'll watch anime, I'll watch you know Spider Verse, I'll watch Pixar, but um, Arcane basically looks like moving art from League of Legends. Like the you know go through a booklet and you see this art. It's almost like concept art. Um, the reason why I do it in that style, not just because I think it looks cool, but because I think it's the best way to preserve the look of the characters in Zelda. Um, at least the the art style that I like the most. So if you go back and you look through some of, like Ocarina, for instance, they're just pix like uh, blocky pixel people. But if you look at some of the uh, strategy guides and stuff, there was a concept art of Ocarina of Time. When they hit Twilight Princess, that was the style that I liked the most. It had a little bit of an anime-ish to it. The eyes got a little bit bigger, and the the faces got more angular, and it was a little bit more, uh, I guess you could say gritty, for lack of a better word. Um, 
Arcane, I think, looks closest to a moving version of the Twilight Princess concept art. So, um, I think if you got that kind of animation and that art direction, um, and put a Legend of Zelda story in that, um, it would be pretty killer. I had also get Chris Pratt to voice Link. And get Chris Pratt to voice Link. <laughs> uh, I would also do it in a series. Um, I am very much uh, biased towards movies. I think movies are just my thing. I like how you can put more money and more effort and more um, time into a smaller amount of time, two hours, three hours, whatever you want to do, and really up the quality. But the way that Zelda games go, I think you would need a series, maybe a limited series. Um, I don't know how many episodes, but it, it couldn't just be a movie. You couldn't cover all of it. I wouldn't start with Ocarina as much as I'd like to. I would start off with something original, loosely based on the first game, which doesn't really have much of a story anyway. It's yeah. pretty much bare bones, save the princess, you know. So it would just be Legend of Zelda. You would base it around the first game, but then you have so much room to add whatever you want in there. So you could stay faithful, but add your own stuff. So I would do something more original and then work Josh, my way. What? I hate to interrupt you, but have you seen The Legend of Neil? Because this has been someone already adapted the first game. Is this a modern version of Zelda on YouTube, or is that something else? Oh, it's it's like before. I, I'm pretty sure it's before um, Sage of Darkness, but the Legend and of Neil. Zero time and all that. It's before that too. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he's drinking beer and auto erotically asphyxiating himself while playing the first game and gets sucked into the game. Okay. I well, highly, I, guess I'm going I highly for- recommend it. <laughs> I'm going for a different version of that. But yeah, so I would do a series. I would do a largely original story based on the bare bones of Saving Princess Zelda from Ganondorf. That kind now, of thing. what do you do with your silent protagonist? I have him speak, but I don't have him speak much. Um, I would, I, I don't make him a mute. I don't know. I think I'd have Link speak just as much as maybe Mad Max did. That was a good example where okay, he doesn't so talk much. he would much, still be but... strong and silent type. Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't have him be a chatterbox. Um, but it really depends on what the story needs. I, I don't have a story in front of me, so um, I wouldn't stick to my guns with that, but I, I think I would like the idea of Link being pretty much you know, Ryan Gosling from Drive. You know, just doesn't... Man, a few words. But that could change depending on how what the story needs, basically. I mean, we should say, like, it's implied pretty much in any of the games with, like, any dialogue that uh he he is talking yeah he's speaking there's he's, just no voice like box there it's the early game thing where the player is in the shoes of the, of the yeah of he's Link, you. you know yeah you know same thing with master chief for instance certainly in ocarina there's parts where people talk are responding to something he said right we he just never hear obviously or see said that. something it's like oh yeah. you're a boy from kokori forest like yeah he said i'm from kokori forest listen so, yeah. that's that's what i would that's what i would do he is more of Josh, a listener. Is there, is there like a movie that exemplifies kind of like the vibe and the the pacing and the um, just like is there anything that that exemplifies what you imagine it would be like? Oh boy, um, Zelda is so unique; it's really difficult to because I earlier I wanted to turn Zelda more into Lord of the Rings. Um, and there's luckily, not a lot of like sword and horse fantasy like series yet really uh, and dan was the one that wrote the script for for sage so um he was sort of the leader on how the story went um with that kind of stuff but yeah that's t- i don't have a direct answer for you on that one i'm not really sure you well it's, it's interesting just because like how you're as a someone who who likes to execute on a vision for film you told me a lot about how you would approach filming it but not a lot about like what the vibe of it would be. That's true. Which is more, that's more what I identify with and what my picks are, are well, what's the, the vibe. I have no aesthetic. idea how I would approach it. Oh, I was just saying, the aesthetic of sort of the arcane to kind of make it feel like and look like the games do. I mean, that, I got that I, that yes. vibe from what Josh Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a visual guy, uh, and Dan would be the first to say that I'm, I'm, he, I think he compared me once to Zack Snyder in the sense that I am good at visualizing how something looks, how action scenes go, and kind of how to direct cool moments. I'm not good at crafting 
story overall. I would, I definitely would need outside help, especially on the writing, dep writing department, on how to pace it and how to how to get the vibe right. Because Zelda is playful. Zelda is, uh, mm. it's a childhood fantasy game. You can't make it the Snyderverse or anything. You can't go. I was thinking like Game that. of Thrones. I think Game of Thrones yeah, would be a good a little, style for a bit much there. Yeah. First um, season, Link gets his head chopped off, and you're like, what? Yeah, you could really throw a wrench in there but yeah you'd have to have i don't want to see link head to flea bottom <laughs> yeah you'd have to have it playful <laughs> I but can, I, I wouldn't want to make it you know disney channel but i i want to make it much more accessible and nintendo for lack of a better term it would need to feel like zelda right well i i think like too like arcane is a good thing to say as far as like how childish versus how adult it's going to be like it doesn't have very you know, adult show to be... too yeah, but it you know you wouldn't you for like a Zelda thing you wouldn't want everyone like saying the f word and like no, Witcher style yeah. nudity and I, stuff. You, you so would I'm, want it rated right teen. It, it would be, be a PG thirteen. It would be a PG thirteen with arcane inspirations, but no, you would not go into anything sexual, anything heavy cursing. But Violence you, would be somewhat limited on gore. So, like Josh, but more more than you'd see in a Mario movie as far as like adult content. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, like, Willow is, like, a perfect example of how oh, you would God. want it to be. Don't get me started on Willow. <laughs> Who's next? In terms of age appropriateness, probably. But in terms of execution, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I will go. I will go next. Go for it. I, um, I would adapt Bloodborne. Um, oh, yeah. There's so much there. Like, just copy-paste the aesthetic. Well, <clears throat> a lot of the game is set I, it would be live action i would do a limited series of like if it's multiple seasons short seasons six eight episodes maybe um and so so like every episode definitely matters you can't have like any filler and um the game itself is set in yarnum after all of this stuff has transpired and it, everything's broken and item descriptions and, and dialogue and stuff is about like how everyone went wrong and stuff so it would be I, it would kind of have to be a prequel you're not going to follow around the hunt the good hunter just killing werewolves and, I was like, going to say my biggest question for you would be because Bloodborne and a lot of other uh, FromSoft games tell the story in that unique way of yeah. reading the aftermath how would you tell that in a video format well, all the different locations, you learn a lot. I mean, you'd have you couldn't do a completely faithful adaptation in a lot of ways because so much of it is purposefully vague. But there's a lot that you could play around with because you we know what the themes are, and we know the the big tent poles of like story wise what happened to get Yarnum to where it is. So you'd go back to like maybe in the probably in the first episode. You guys probably don't aren't even familiar with the plot that much, but uh, I have I learned that this was a video game tonight. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so the, the first episode would be would like end with them digging up Ebriatus, which is like this alien goddess thing that's like terrifying, and then they start using her blood uh, to to be healthy, um, and you'd go slowly the. The main character, uh, well, it, it would be a uh, an, an ensemble. So, like, you wouldn't primarily follow one person. It would be different people doing their different things, which would make a lot of sense because there's the chapel and there's the university. And I guess there's probably other places. Uh, I mean, certainly, like, the, the workshop, too. But the main character would definitely be Lady Maria, um, who the doll is based off of when you go into the hunter's dream. Uh, and is Lady Maria the hunter, or would that be she? Is, well, she's a boss in the DLC, but certainly like the most central figure in the entire game. Um, like she's guarding, like the the end of the first season or so. Like it would be leading up to them committing the atrocities in the fishing village. Uh, and you'd so it would it would be kind of like uh you would have moments of, you know, CGI or, you know, high um, budget 
action stuff. Quality but stuff, yeah. You could certainly do a lot of just like dialogue stuff. You'd have to have really good costumes, really good sets. But like people, you could just have people, you know, talking there because there's a lot of like philosophy about like, you know, what human beings are and like what we should do, like transhumanism kind of ideals and stuff. Um, and like even the architecture of the world is very specific as far as like a lot of the buildings are like uh, almost cartoonishly like heavier at the top. My point was like the, the metaphor of the architecture is like you're setting up these large buildings that look destined to topple down. So that would be a large theme in the show of like we are at the top of the like this is a renaissance uh we have cured every disease now and stuff um and then you'd have a lot of fun with like when werewolves show up uh i thought this was a fun thing in the game that you read about is like all the stuff that they try to figure out of like how do we fight these things um and there's even stuff like there's aesthetics about people cutting their legs off or like tying things to the legs so which is based on like in the game, it even says like, this is because they thought the infection started in your left leg or something like that. So you'd have a lot of stuff of like failure to under to like keep up with the new ways that technology has like mutated things and stuff. That'd be a tough nut to crack. Oh yeah. I, I have no faith that anyone would be. Able to. It would be it yeah. like world. an excellent world to do a, a... To, to to do a film in or a series and the question i guess would be sort of like you know what what would the the characters and the story be because it uh, i've you know i'm sitting here reading the wikipedia article uh the is the the protagonist is sort of a is it customizable it's not like a right, oh no i mean the, the protagonist from the game would have nothing to do with it yeah because it's it's literally just you're an outsider and you're coming to this world after it's been shattered Got it. Uh, so the, the story the would boss, follow like what is pretty much the, the bosses. Yeah. Cause in the game, the bosses you're fighting, I think it's like Bioshock where it's like, these people were the leaders of their field, essentially. Bioshock's or a good like, example. you know, they had something really important to do with the area that you're in, like the university um, and stuff. So like, it would be about them, like, changing the world with this new like technology and these new findings about like, here's the real nature of reality. Oh yeah. Mikalash would be a big part. Um, cause he has like nothing to do with the actual blood. Uh, I'm more assuming about, this like, would be reach... very much in the R rated. Uh, oh yeah. I would, I, I think it would have to be. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I mean, neither of these are, well, the the closest thing it would kind of be like, I think, is um, Penny Dreadful. But yeah, it sounds to... like kind of Penny Dreadful meets Underworld. Yeah, yeah I okay. I would be slow to get to the Underworld part because uh, in the in the game it's like uh, uh, there's werewolves everywhere, but it would be like a slow creeping thing where like you know the second episode or something there's the first report of like. There was an attack by a beast, and they're like, "Oh, what? What happened?" So, like, it would it would be a slow burn leading up to like these w cataclysmic events. There's even like some peasants with pitchforks and stuff that are hairy. Like, there's people turning into these things slowly, where you see you see middle stages of the transformation. You know, yeah, torches and stuff. And um, there's a there's a concept because like the like the strongest boss in the game i think is uh is ludwig who was like essentially the best hunter and the way that the lore too. works is the more you're able to like hold on to your humanity and and like not slowly turn then when you actually do it's like a bunch it's like stretching out a rubber band longer and longer so like you release all that pressure and become like a, a much worse beast based on that so you like especially for that character there'd be a lot of interesting stuff about like what does it what kind of conviction like you know this pinnacle like he'd you know he'd be like superman like an inflappable on this you know like morally complete person that you know it's leading up to, like all of this pressure is building up below the surface that at some point is going to release on unleash mm. like an absolute demon mm. that could be really interesting trev what are you 
this was a this was a hard one for me because I feel like all the things I care about or love would be impossible to adapt, or I would even know I wouldn't know how to talk about adapting them. So I chose one that I think I would really enjoy and is absolutely achievable. Um, the Last that of is, Us. No, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been on this list. Like, had they not made it, it would have been on my list. So I'm I'm enormously happy with what they did. But no, at mine mine is Splinter Cell. I uh, yeah. I love espionage thrillers like i just i I wouldn't even call them good they're just fun i really enjoy them and amazon has some sort of deal with tom clancy um i don't know what it is but you know they did uh, without remorse and they did the terminal list with chris pratt those are right in line with what a splinter cell tv show would be like terminal Um, list isn't tom clancy but they're doing a uh a sequel they're doing rainbow six with um as a sequel to without remorse six really fantastic i mean yeah. you're right it's not but it's in a very similar vein like there, yes, there's it's the same like, going on it that's the same wheelhouse yeah so uh, splinter cell is all about like honestly it's you it's it's you could take born identity like that is the structure is you have a lot going on behind the scenes back at headquarters a lot of the politics a lot of the operations and then you have the agent sam fisher who's being inserted in to deal with stuff there's a lot of i think really cool material there's uh, one of my favorite missions of the game is you infiltrate the CIA yeah. because you need to get information. So you're 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 an ultra ultra shadow organization that is sort of doing missions against the U.S. So imagine like sneaking into um, different government buildings to because you need to get information. Um, and then there's a whole other other subplot of um, uh, Sam needing to protect his daughter. Um, he's he has a daughter. There's a number of different plot points, um, but I, that it's that always mess, a daughter, always a daughter. Very Jack Bauer, but yes, where he has to sort of leave his what he's doing to protect the world or his mission, whatever, to come back home and deal with people who are targeting his family to get at him. So I think I think that is a low hanging fruit. I think it would be super fun, and I really do hope that. Um, uh, Amazon adapts that at one point. Series or movie? I would want a limited series. I would not want a movie. Is Dan Dan? You're are you you the only one who said you wanted a movie? I think I did. Yeah. Okay. Or franchise. Well, I, just, or I movies. think that I think that well, a, obviously. I think that Metroid would get repetitive over. Uh, the whole course of a series um because the part of it part of cracking the nut of metroid would be trying to figure out how to make it work um for the you know in trying to make it work in the three-act structure uh i don't think it would need to be a series i feel like based on this it seems like trevor you would be the closest to being able to answer like who you would cast as the lead well the voice actor's too old unfortunately Dave Batista. It would have been cool. Tom oh, Hardy cool. has been attached to it at one point. Um, the last kind of That's time right. they were kicking it around. Remember that? I, uh, that. I think that would be good. I also I, they even released thought a teaser I heard with the whole goggle thing turning on. It was a whole announcement, and it fell through. A long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Wait. What, so, what do you think, Trevor? I would. So, Sam Fisher's character, like signature characteristic, is that he's older. Uh, he he is an older person. So, I. Like I, I'm not good at, at like knowing actors that are up and coming or whatnot. Like I would lean towards, um, like a John Hamm. Like if he could do like an older <laughs> character, You're like a Silver Fox. Yeah, I think John um, Hamm's in yeah. his early fifties. That's not bad, actually. Yeah, I think I think he could do it. I think the reason why I lean towards a serious as to a movie is I would want them to like slow roll a geopolitical conflict. Where yeah. it starts as a, as a singular small mission, and then slowly devolves into an escalating situation um, that you know has it requires multiple interactions to to solve. Those do very seem very a little rushed in movie form. I have noticed yeah. actually. Tom Holland yeah. would be good if you want to. If you're thinking long term. <laughs> no, thank you. Actually, Young, I I gotta Sam. revise because uh, uh, Dan is the one that basically said his his Samus movie metro movie would be a would be a movie um depending on the story i think a uh a original zelda type movie could be a movie 
Ocarina specifically made me think of a series because of so many lands you have to go to and so many different chapters you could do. But if you did something like we did, um, that's a, a, an original story, pretty bare bones, movie, big budget, the whole thing. But if you go into the bigger worlds where you got different temples to go to, I don't want to cut anything out. So that's what you go to a series. So just need to add that in there. I'm not going to change my answer because I stick to my guns. Who would you, or uh, Josh would do um, animation, but uh, do you have any, oh, yeah. any voices that you would want in your uh, series? Mm. In Zelda? Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. Um, I haven't thought about that. Well, Chris Pratt, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we already established Chris Pratt's going to be Link. Uh, and who would do, you, Actually, do what he... accent? What accent would he be? Oh, um, that's funny. I just saw, I was just watching a podcast. I don't know what it was about why is English accents the most popular fantasy accent. And this probably has something to do with England taking over the world a couple hundred years ago. England and the, the well, knights and the, of the round table and all that stuff that generated in yeah. Europe. I, that makes well, that, sense. That uh, country invented the genre. Sure. Uh, so it, we, it would be a largely English accent, probably, but if you go into Grudo Valley or anything like that, you're going to have, I would do something more um, vaguely Middle Eastern. Vaguely Middle Eastern. Because <gasps> you know? uh, there, there, there's a lot of desert area, but then you go to like the Water Temple of Zoras and you can do something completely different. Um, it's like I Australian. Think, I don't think Australian would work for that one. But some something with some some, some thick ac accents or rolls of the tongue or, or something. I'm, I'm not really sure. I haven't thought about it yet. So who would be like Lud who would be Ludwig? Oh, that that I don't know. I mean, that could Michael be Fassbender. like that could uh, be anybody no. really. They, they uh, just have to come across like very pure. From Luther. Oh, uh, he's um, Elba. He he's actually Elba. him. Someone like him. Like I think he's miscast. In in a good amount of like fantasy stuff, that that is a a role that like his type like would be really good at, where it's like, you know, struggling with inner darkness while still being like a hero. I like that guy in anything. If, if Charlie Theron from two thousand two is not available, um, <laughs> she's like not known to be particularly of a of an of an ass kicker, but I think Anya Taylor Joy would have the eyes for Samus. And it, funny enough, she's playing Charlize Theron in the next Mad Max movie. So there you oh, go. Yeah. They're, they're doing okay. like a Furiosa prequel. Yeah, they're doing thing. a Furiosa prequel. And so, yeah, that yes. that that would be my choice. Uh, or Charlize Theron from 2002. Oh, and speaking of Luther, like my, in my mind, I would cast as uh, Lady Maria, um, the chick from Game of Thrones. She was also Luther, who, who was dating... Um, like she's the wildling lady that was dating. John. Oh yeah, her. Oh, the redhead. The uh, I don't know the. Actual... You know nothing. Yeah, you know nothing. John Snow. You know nothing, John yeah. Snow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't remember her name, but I remember that line. You know nothing, John Snow. This is so super random, but they should if they ever do a Horizon Forbidden West show or TV show, they should cast her as uh, Aloy. I think she's good. She's she's a... I don't see her in enough stuff. I feel like. All right. Well, um, as always, if anyone watching has uh, questions or topic suggestions, please leave them in the comments or send them to the Josh Dixon Show dot com. No, sorry, not just the Josh Dixon Show at gmail dot com. The and Josh Dixon Show or just the, Josh? The the I'll put it on the screen. The Josh Dixon Show at gmail dot com. Until next time, we'll see you later.